friends, let's give some tzedakah together with our prayers and together with our Torah study and together with our commitment to Hashem, to every other single Jew, to Torah, as I mentioned yesterday, the Rebbe said in his first inaugural official speech, there are three loves, Avas Hashem, Avas HaTorah, and Avas Yisrael. Loving God, loving Torah, and loving your fellow. Avas Yisrael. They're all interdependent. They can't be one without another. At what point does this start? When do we really become responsible for all these things? So we know we have a bar mitzvah boy or a bat mitzvah girl. Bat mitzvah at the age of 12, bar mitzvah at the age of 13. Girls mature before boys, so they start getting their responsibility at the age of 12. I want to share with you, yesterday I had this beautiful opportunity while being in New York in honor of Yitzvat, as we spoke a few times, had this uh, opportunity to be present at a rally, a gathering of hundreds of, yesh- of uh, bar mitzvah boy age. 12 and a half, 13, 13 and a half. And they had this gathering in honor of Yitzvat, in honor of the Rebbe's leadership. And I heard a very interesting thought from the principal Rebbe Lustig, and I think it's worth sharing. And he asked the boys, do you know why you're being called Bar Mitzvah? What means Bar Mitzvah, he says. And everybody jumps out. The coming of age becoming a mature person, becoming responsible. We're not a child anymore. We're becoming an adult. We could be counted for a minion. We could be a chazan in a shul. We can read the Torah. Till now we were minors. Now we are supposed to be adults. Yeah, he says, but what does the word bar mean? Some knew. And he said, bar is the Aramaic word for <coughs> son of <coughs> as often we say, Moshe bar Amram as an example. Moshe, the son of Amram. Miriam, but Chavet. What language is bar? It's not Hebrew. It's Aramaic. So he asked the question, why do we call the bar mitzvah boy with this the word son of. Wouldn't it be more appropriate, like as an example, when we say we have an owner of a house, he's called Baal Habayit, the owner of the house. Baal Hasadeh, the owner of the field. Baal Dovo, the owner of a certain matter, certain issue. Baal Teshuva, a person who came back to Judaism, is called the Baal Teshuva. Somebody who's owned up once again his commitment, his connection with Torah mitzvahs. So why don't we call this young man or this girl, the same thing would be Balat Habayit, the owner of the house of a woman. So why is it Bar and Bat, the son and the daughter? Are we the sons of Torah? Are we the sons of mitzvahs? So he shared a beautiful thought and said, a field, piece of real estate, one can own today and tomorrow disown it. Hopefully Baal Teshuva will not return to his previous ways. But it's an option, it's a possibility. Any ownership, a husband who is called Baal, unfortunately there could be an option of not be the husband anymore. But when it comes to mitzvahs, we tell this young man and this young lady, there is no option. A child will always be the child of their parent. A father and a mother will always be the father of the mother of this young man and young lady, or for that matter, at any age. It's a bar mitzvah. It is an unbreakable ownership. And that's why we say it even in Aramaic, even for the person who is not familiar with Hebrew, the person who is not familiar with Judaism, 
has to know that he she has an intrinsic connection. It's interesting, Mr. George Rowe, huge philanthropist, was telling the Rebbe that he started the Minion for Rosh Hashanah for unaffiliated people and he greatly enjoyed it. And after when the Rebbe thanked him for his initiative, the Rebbe said, unaffiliated, no background, he said. There's no such a thing as a Jew who has no background. We all descendants of Avraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov. All we need to do is to tune in. And by tuning in, we're connecting. And by connecting, we're reviving. But we revive Am Yisrael Chai to the ultimate life of with Mashiach in the Beis Hamikdash, and may this happen today.